moment when you ask your question. Regarding lunch, no problem. After this session, the, the luncheon is served in the next room, and you are most welcome to attend the lunch. Can you hear me, my friends? Today we were prepared for everything. Dr. Eduardo Sojo, my good friend, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure to be with you today in order to launch the website of the INECI on well-being on regional uh, indicators. I welcome Mr. Soho and Ineki for their willingness to give a step forward in our shared mission to measure and record the well-being in order to improve public policies in Mexico and the life uh, conditions of the Mexican people. In order to face economic challenges of the present times, OCD has launched the initiative for a better life. Better life is aiming to measure social well-being beyond income and evolution of the GDP in areas such as employment, security, civic involvement, culture, health, and education, among others. Yesterday, we had the pleasure to present to you right here the third edition 2015 of the work on the index of a better life which is part of this better life initiative that is referring to the member countries of the OCD and some non-member OCD countries which we also measure today China Brazil Indonesia South Africa among others, and, pro and countries such as Costa Rica, Laona, Lithuania, which are in process of becoming members of the OECD. This has enabled us to collect a solid evidence, hard evidence. I was saying that life conditions vary not only among countries, but also within them. It is precisely about that, uh, the work that we will present to, sing to you today. On sustainable development works are the successors of the development goals for the millennium that were approved in year 2000. We worked 15 years on that, and we have just concluded the week before last on New, New York to approve the ODSs for the forthcoming years. And for the GPS that we have said that it is necessary to undertake or achieve uh, those objectives in 169 individual goals in which those 17 objectives and the 400 that will enable indicators will enable us to meet those 17 objectives. So it is the right time for the NEHI to launch this site. According to indicators that come out from the initiative of a better life, we have the right measurement tool to put into place those objectives of those indicators. We are fully convinced that the creation of public policies demands a full frame of indicators that define well-being and they will not be limited economic uh, conditions, as we were saying yesterday in the forum. With an index of a better life, we have made a mapping of a national well-being. And as of the last year, we put into practice 
decide how is life in your region. If we download from uh, from national uh, comparisons to the evolution at a regional level, very clearly, we are aiming to do this much more granular, much more specific, much more concrete, so it can help us to organize better public policies and have a, a much more concrete uh, objectives. Here I want to tell you how slide, the one that I presented yesterday, some of you might not have attended the meeting, no, but this is a chapter of how life in Mexico. And afterwards, we were talking about the fact that we carried out this work, How is Life on Your Region? And the subtitle is How to Measure Local and Regional Well-Being for Public, public Policies Purposes. Then, I want to give you an example. It turns out to be that we went to work on the individual at certain uh, states of the republic, not systematically state by state, as we will be commenting today, and as we, Dr. Soho and myself, will be telling you. But this is a case. The state of Morelos in set the indicators of well-being. We signed with Graco Ramirez, and by the way, he was here during the opening ceremony of the forum, and he participated in some of the pallets. We signed with him an agreement in order to support the state. So its public policies and allocation of resources would be based on objective uh, factors and specific measurements. And now, we are measuring the well-being of the Mexican states. This is the English version. We are coming down to a very specific granular level. And I want to tell you that tomorrow, Mario Pezzini, the director of the Development Center, you met him. He has also participated in some of the poor panels of this forum. We'll be launching here the equivalent of what is um, the work done for Latin America. So we will have the cosmic comparisons, if you want to call them like way, of a great number of countries, of uh, member countries or partners, and um, the countries that we call them strategic partners or key partners which are not uh, members, but are large countries with which we regularly work with, uh, those that are trying to become members. And then we carry out measurements at a regional level. Among us, you know, it is, G is already known here in Guadalajara, the forum. Martin Durand, mm, director of statistics, and obviously, it is a crucial part of this entire mechanism in order to identify, to process all this information. We also have among us Roel Alter, the Director of Governance and Territorial Development for the OECD, that also moderated one of the, the panels of this forum yesterday. And so we have different levels, then we have regional Latin America, and then we have the topic of the states at a general level. And then we were talking about regional. So we will be presenting to you today this part. What is this about? Well, we're talking about a tool. It is an instrument, it is a way of knowing, but it's also a way of, compar of comparing. When we're talking about regions, we have 362 regions of thir 34 countries. 
the wealth of information is huge and how it enables us to be landing public policies not at a, at a national level but a regional level and then at a state level like we're doing for Mexico. Yesterday we were talking to the municipal president of Guadalajara and he said, couldn't we do something at um, surrounding area of the city because we're talking about five million inhabitants, which is a larger population than some of the member countries of this OCDE, which means that we can compare income, health, education, civic engagement, access to services and housing at a regional level, among others. And with the website that INEGI is launching today, Mexico is setting the example for all of those member countries of the OECD. Mexico sets the example. Well, uh, congratulations, Mr. Soho. This website it will be creating a unique uh, teller presenting objective and subjective indicators because we ask for the people not only numeric information, but also what they think and what they feel on 12 topics that cover the material conditions, but also the quality of life on these 32 federated entities of Mexico. The regional well-being portal that has the states, each one, based on our frame for a better life, will be a solid pillar to establish the well-being of the individuals regardless where they are born or where they live. It offers an innovative model for other countries that will be interested in developing a full approach to measure the differences among the different areas. What is information telling us, or at least uh, some of those tags? For instance, that to live in, in a state with low performance in Mexico, I anticipated some of the facts yesterday. If we compare it to living in one where we see a much better performance, exerts a very important many uh, it affects a great variety of things not only one if one individual lives in, in the one of those states with worse conditions it will be four times poorer could die four years younger for ha four times more probabilities of dropping out of the school four times more probabilities of having a longer scheduled job and um, not that well paid if he lived in a state that would be better developed and that within our same country and that within our Mexico. To have access to this kind of data, that will have an impact on the way we design public policies in Mexico. That does not mean that authorities are not listening, but the time when we can quantify that, reality is absolutely overwhelming. We need to deal with this because we are there, because we are seeing the degree of differences and the type of problems they are giving rise to. Our new report on the measurement on the, uh, on the well-being of Mexican states, by the way, is as a continuation of INEGI. INEGI is launching the web, and in a few days, perhaps in a couple of weeks, we will be publishing detail on states, one by one and all of them compared to the national media and Mexico is compared to itself at a state level versus the mean and the methodology is rather interesting and it shows that inequalities in income in and inside regions are very broad. 
poverty by income is still a concern in many states. And uh, there are still many people who lack utilities and basic uh, services based on the di multidimensional poverty indicator prepared by Coneval that goes beyond a mere measurement of income. 76% of people of the population in Chiapas rated 2014 as a poor year. In Nuevo Leon, this rate is 20%. So we're talking about 3.5 times greater incidence of poverty in one state as compared to other state in Mexico. Of course, we know that uh, Chiapas is the poorest as compared to the one that shows better indicators. So living in a region that is mainly rural explains many of these differences, or at least some of them. And it is clear that we need to do more in order to improve access to basic services and utilities, reduce informality and poverty in rural areas. Of course, we know this intuitively. We know that the poorest of the poor, as a former president said, are in the rural areas of Mexico. However, we should also pay attention to uh, dropping, increasing on equality in urban areas in Mexico because there is an accelerated process of urbanization and so the problem is being uh, mo is moving from rural areas to the urban areas and we are not yet solving the first one because when they go to the cities people do not obtain education skills income or capacities in order to perform better and live better in areas that are far more hostile for the poor. And of course, we are talking about urban or peri or semi-urban areas. In 2014, urban poverty in Mexico reached the alarming rate of 38 million people. This is statistically one third of the Mexican population of the urban poverty. Today, two thirds of the poor population live in, in cities already. And urban uh, population is not rating better with respect to uh, health services as compared to rural areas nationwide because they lack information, instruments, contacts, and contexts in the labor arena. And now that we talk about inequality, we need to stress that, it, of course, it does not only have to do with income. It's not only a matter of wage, salary, and benefits. It also affects many other levels, many other stages of life. And education is the area where this is far more clear, the effects of inequality I'm, I'm talking about. Data show that people who graduated from secondary school can expect living four years more as compared to their less educated uh, counterparts and more if, if they live in Sonora, in Coahuila, in Mexico. And Mexican states have uh, moved at different rates with dimensions uh, that Mexico has improved as a whole. For example, from 2000 to, to, to 2013, rates of uh, maternal mortality dropped to less than 50% in Quintana Roo and Querétaro. That is wonderful, of course. However, they increased in Baja California Sur and Campeche, in the same country, in the same Mexico, with national and in, in national policies and institutions. We're talking about the Social Security Institute, the, the ISTE, and uh, all the health uh, Authority. So in some states, it dropped by 50%, and in others, it increased by 50%. So updating and uh, regulating this indicator will allow to move debate on public policy in Mexico and will allow to consolidate and uh, cope with current challenges. With this data, government at a local and, uh, and country level will allow uh, policies to truly reflect local 
circumstances. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends, uh, Dr. Soho, improving well-being should be the main goal of public policies. As happens in Mexico, many regions, many countries of the OECD are putting in place initiatives for the well-being aimed at improving the efficacy and the coherence of public policies. And I'm talking about coherence, and I wish to underline it, because it is often seen that we have public policies that are intended to carry out some objectives and tasks and missions. But with some other policies, we are making all of these harder or pretty much impossible. All of this has the obvious moral and ethical political implication, of course. And it has to do with economic and productivity matters, with competitiveness at different regions, at different states, at different municipalities. Upon improving the quality of life, we should improve all the rest of the dimensions that contribute to making Mexico as economy, as society, to have a more successful behavior. The OECD has updated measurement tools in order to meet the expectations of people. We have, a ra we have a seen economic development based on prosperity and well-being. On, na on general national statistics, measures at a regional and local level for well-being for different regions and groups. Therefore, it is necessary to keep this in mind, to put this evidence and diversity at the service of decision and public policy makers, and of course, of the people in order to foster open dialogue and to take more effective uh, policy actions and to measure in a more accurate way. If we cannot measure, we cannot manage. For the OECD, there's great pride in contributing with Mexico and contributing with the INEGI in this transcendental project. So this portal of INEGI is an excellent example of the good job that Mexico is uh, doing in order to improve policies for a very li better life. Thank you. Dr. Soho, tiene usted la palabra. Dr. Soho, the floor is all yours. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am honored to introduce the indicators, the, the well-being indicators portal, together with uh, my friend, uh, Secretary General of the OECD, Miguel Angel Gurria, my dear friend, and friend of the INEGI, and share this collaborative uh, work. This work uh, when it comes in the collaboration between the OECD and the INEGI, but not only that, we are showing this work with a collaboration of OECD, INEGI, and Mexican states. What you will see was built by all of us with a team with the participation of the director of the Statistics and, Ge and the Geography Institute of Jalisco, of Jalisco. And together with all of them and with the support of the OECD, we identified which were the indicators we had to conduct follow-up on. Obviously, there are many motivations on why should we do this. And I, am want to sh I want to share with you which are the main motivations on why to uh, undertake this task. Number one has to do with the fact that measuring based on indicators has become more and more relevant. It has been important, of course, to have indicators. But in the past few years, that dimension that this has achieved is spectacular, perhaps due 
to the Millennium Goals, but perhaps because we have more and better information, and this is a motivator for the building of indicators. And here, of course, we have to work on the National Catalog of Indicators. We already have that at the website. And what is this all about? This is an, uh, an indic a set of key indicators with metadata, with statistical series, of course. And it is a system that has 230 different indicators with which we can measure what's going on in Mexico based on a number of criteria. You have to go to the to the website of the Ministry of Education, Conagua, where, wherever, to see what's going on with the country. But today, we have 233 indicators in the National Catalog of Education, Population, Housing, Poverty, uh, um, the Law System, etc. Another example on the dimension of these indicators has to do with the site that has to do with the development of the millennium. And this site in our country is together and with the leadership of the office of uh, the president of the republic with a special technical committee presided by the president's office and we are part of this committee and we are the technical secretary therefore we agree metadata and uh, calendars on all the indicators on how to build the whole thing with the objectives of the millennium and as Jose Angel was saying these objectives are going to to change now into the uh, sustainable development goals. Anyway, there's a site, and we can conduct follow-up on the 80 objectives of the development of the millennium, and this is the first uh, step. Of course, there's great interest and great demand in order to, to build this. And what is that second motivation? The second motivation is that this effort is also being made by our states. And when you go and you look out at the go state governments in Mexico, you certainly will find a number of experiences. You find all this information. This is the site, for example, of the government of Coahuila, and they have a set of indicators. They have 204 indicators at the website of the state of uh, Coahuila. If then you go to Aguascalientes, you will find that they have this site with information, with indicators. They have 238 indicators to make nation nationwide comparisons in 40 different topics. Then if you go to Yucatan, for example, then you will find a, a set of indicators at a state level. They will find, you will find 141 indicators. And then if you uh, visit the site of the government of Jalisco, then you will find a very comprehensive system on how to measure the evolution and the, the, the things that are going on in Jalisco. And of course, it is very well presented and prepared. So they have here 406 indicators. So each state at a national level is building its own system. And it comes a time when indicators are not the same. And it comes a time when methodology in order to build indicators is also different. And then it happens that one state uh, uh, decides to put one an indicator because it's convenient and another one decides to put another one and that is motivator number two to have a set of indicators uh, agreed among all uh, in order to mention to measure regardless who goes first second or third now what is our third motivation our third motivation is that we have the OECD initiative that is trying to expand the view on how we measure development and progress in society. And as uh, the Secretary General, General has just said, they started measuring at a country level, but then they realized that they had this initiative, this house life in your region, and that that was the view of the institute and the view of the state uh, governments, that we had to uh, go beyond these indicators to compare ourselves and to incorporate this vision of the OECD that is far more comprehensive in order to see how we measure ourselves. And taking those three elements into consideration and upon working directly with the different states, we identified 
the indicators of well-being for the 32 states. And you will find among those indicators, uh, there are 35 indicators of on housing, income, uh, employment, access to services, security. You will find things that have to do with education, environment, and things that are not usually incorporated, like, say, like, like governance and civil commitment, things that have to do with health, satisfaction, life satisfaction, and uh, life balance, for example, and things that have to do with community, their social relationships. So we're talking about 35 indicators in these uh, dimensions. It is important to mention that when this has been done for other countries, they cannot cover indicators of the 12 dimensions because there is no information. And fortunately enough, in Mexico, we were able to uh, cover these 12 dimensions. This work called the uh, Well-Being System for Federal Entities can now be found as of today at the website of the Institute. Together with the OECD, we decided to make all of this information available. Uh, and it, of course, it is the first version, release number one, because this is dynamic. And of course, we need to hear from you and to have your feedback. And of course, we will incorporate new indicators, because as we gather more information, we will be able to uh, complement the uh, different uh, dimensions. And tomorrow, we will be presenting the new survey, where we link uh, subjective be uh, well-being with multidimensional poverty. And that new uh, survey that was uh, barely recently presented is going to motivate for these 35 indicators to expand. But anyway, it is not only a matter of expanding them, but to embrace the commitment with the states, with uh, the OECD and with the INEGI to conduct follow-up and to see it through time. To see whether we make progress or not in the different topics that the, the Secretary General mentioned. We will see a video so that you can have a taste on the site. This is the website of the INEKI. And there, you go to the statistics page. And there, you will find the well-being by state. And that's the way it is. And there, you can see the 35 indicators in the initiative of uh, the OECD to conduct follow-up on life conditions at each and every state. And there you will see how are all the indicators. You will see all the different sections that we mentioned. We'll see income, we'll see employment, we'll see uh, all the different states across Mexico. The 32 states, of course, and additional to the list, of course, you can use all of these systems and uh, browse each and every state directly. As you see, Jalisco is over there. So let's see some of these indicator indicators uh, for processing, for example, education. In education, there are several indicators one that is going to be presented today and that is dropouts and we do not see dropping out too much and that is at a state level and at uh, middle uh, higher uh, secondary pretty much tertiary education and there you see the the great differences for example in this case jalisco is the one that is rating the best with the least uh, dropout. And so what is going on? What is it that they are doing in Jalisco and what is not going on elsewhere? And this is the purpose of all this information, to see what are the best practices. And there we can see not only data, we can see definition, we can see how the indicator was built, and there we can find metadata that is far more specific, and that is the formula used for this uh, dropout index by state that as former uh, central banker uh, in Tunisia said, we have to see this because we do not know where is it that information uh, will be evident. 
Now let's go and see another indicator, for example, for Jalisco. For Jalisco, we are seeing income, and there you will see indicators of inequality, and you will find poverty, and we will see extreme multidimensional uh, poverty, and there you will see uh, information as Secretary General, how is Chiapas and Oaxaca? They are a lot higher than what you see in Nuevo León, in Nuevo León Querétaro, Aguascalientes, Mexico City, or Jalisco. And that uh, allows us to see what goes on, but not only to see it in a transversal view, but uh, through time. This is the Carnival series on what has gone on in extreme multidimensional poverty in Jalisco. And to make it easier, you can download information and then you can process this information for comparison purposes and analysis purposes as presented by the OECD Secretary General. This is, of course, a platform inside the open data platform with all the information from the Institute and the OECD. We incorporated to the system a series of dynamic graphs because something that has uh, progressed a lot is visualization. These are the gap minded. And of course, you will see here an indicator that I like very much. Uh, they say that inequality is vast among states, but that some uh, uh, indicators are converging. And see, this is how we were in, in 2008. Uh, child mortality rate all the way from 1990 and see how it was for Jalisco and data from 1990 that's how the country was in child mortality see the convergence see that they are all dropping there are indicators where we are different, but particularly in this one, we are seeing convergence in our country. Child uh, mortality is less. There are states that are a little over the mean. Uh, we're talking about 12.4, if I remind, cor if I remember correctly. A little above the millennia uh, goals. And Jalisco uh, has a 10 from zero to five years, children uh, for, for every 100,000 born alive. We have the bar, the bars seeing how each state is moving and this allows us to see convergences, divergences. And um, of course the OECD has put this on the table uh, and we're talking about the PISA results in maths. And there we see something that is worth taking a look at because uh, in PISA, those in PISA that did not perform well are uh, improving, but those who were better are not improving. So we have a convergence, but we are not improving here. And this is the graph uh, that uh, makes analysis easier. So I wish to tell you that this indicator system that we built together, states, OECD and INEGI, is available at inegi.org today. And I would like to conclude by saying that, Jose Angel, it has been an honor, a privilege to work with the OECD and to uh, move forward in indicators. Thank you. We have an opening a Q and A session. Please, we will ask you to say your name and your media. 
and who you or institution and to whom you address your question. Hi. I have talked with some of my colleagues from Chile, from Colombia, and say, when I heard the governor of Jalisco, I felt like in Switzerland. And when I heard the one in of Morelos, like in Sweden, are they that good? And then I said, well, the truth is that not that bad. But the hard, hard data can clear us things up. I was seeing the end of the brochure that you have handed out, and you say first a year available, and then this says the last available. But it turns out to be that in the income indicator, Jalisco dropped. I'm not going to give a specific follow-up of Jalisco, but it comes to contradict the presentation made by the government. But on Morelos, I do follow Morelos quite well. It turned out to be it had 6,222 income rate, but and then it dropped to 5,700. So there's a contraction of 453. But let's go to the toughest one, poverty. Hard data is there. 2010, state had 43.2 on poverty. 2014, with a period where the governor was in office, then poverty had grown to 52.4. But there is an intermediate that shows 17.8 growth of poverty in one state, the worst of the 32. It was not the one before last. So I would like to hear from the speakers what were the mistakes made on public policies, and we could learn from that. But there are governors that did have a good performance. Federal District, Aguascalientes improved. So I would like to hear from them. Because you were blaming insecurity, but it turns out to be that in the same data on 28, homicide rate by 15.3, but when the new governor came into office, it, it raised to 23, almost a double, but just as a piece of information. Let's go to the next one. You have the perception. Perception is 48 points. 2014 is higher. Independence from judicial power as well. So I make that clarification because we do a very specific journalism. If you knew the conditions of the state, would you not imagine they could even, because of revenge, take your business away? Then the, the Secretary of Finance is here and she's saying those data is not true. Why don't we organize other policy in the future? Because what is being said here we are not allowed to ask over there. I think that we should learn from Jalisco and maybe bring or invite the governor of Mexico City so they can tell us what we can do because their states are, have a better performance. Thank you, Ivan Ureño from Journalism Without Censure. A couple of questions more, then you will, Ivan Ureña. Over here, Cesar Barbosa from Millennium. Over here, I am Rigoberto Flores Olvera, the director and president of International Institute for Re Research for Development on resilience and uh, positive uh, psychology. I just want to congratulate you and just a brief question. I, I, do you have the mobile version? Because I was not able to, uh, to access the website on my mobile phone. Cesar Barbosa from Milenio. I, I would like to, some precision of some facts. You say 30 million people. Could you please precise um, 
the years in which the percentage went up uh, so we can have the context on this figure. You are also mentioning in the talk that poverty rate in the last and first year you mentioned in four at 46 percent it is stagnated while homicide has increased over nine percentage points i would like to know on the opinion of the secretary general of o e c d if how, how can we fight those problems how can we tackle them the those problems that the mexican government has faced because we see stagnation on these figures that which are so relevant life satisfaction uh, was has eight of what i can see what does this number mean to you how can we represent in this measurement of the forum and this new concept that you are trying to go beyond the orthodox methods what could we expect if you like i would like to start with some comments and um, then i would give the floor to the secretary general of the oecd precisely that's what we have the indicators for in each uh, federated entity you will find positive and negative things things you must always learn of what is being done well, you can imitate it, reproduce it, study it, and what is being done wrongly, then you can learn from that as well so you can correct it. Indicators. <coughs> the only objective is to enable you to evaluate we agreed on the indicators and then we generated the data. What you are seeing, anybody can see it's available. We will be increasing the amount of information published because that's what it is. this is all about. We want to empower the society so they know what's going on in each of the entities, but with a different perspective. Many of the indicators that you will find are non-traditional indicators, not the ones that we are traditionally observing, but others that can be there and maybe you, we have not paid the right attention to them. I do believe that yes, we will have a mobile application. We have many applications of this for mobile devices and we will try to do that. Normally, you should be able to download it to your mobile device. If not, then we will fix that next week because we should do it and we should have it available. It's a work that we have to carry out and we are engaged to do so. Um, I'm glad to see that you are here because uh, you represent a sector that is on positive psychology and we are paying attention to that, which we did not did in the past. Normally, the way that you measure things is you have a card that is given to the survey population and you ask what is the life satisfaction level from zero to 10 and you give them a card so they can write down. Almost all private and we have a measure it give you a similar number. What is important, it's not the average, what is the wealthiest part. What is wealthiest is how we feel about security, how we feel about affection, how we feel about family life, how we feel about economic conditions, how we feel with our housing. We are trying to explore each and every topic and you will find on the tomorrow's presentation how we feel per age. Who is much more satisfied with life? Those that are single, those that are married, those that have primary school degrees only, or those that are at a university degrees graduates. So all these statistics en enable us to explore. Those are analyses. They allow us to cross data to really take advantage of it and try to bring topics up. It is very important that you, users of information, you can see everything was happening in our country, good things and bad things, because you can learn from everything. 
just pay attention to what the director of the NEGE is talking about, of how we feel in regards to housing. Normally, we measure the number of houses, square meters of houses, if it has cement floor or a dust floor, or does it have a permanent ceiling or a vulnerable one, if it is one story or two stories, if it has bathroom, if it has running water or not, among other things. And all of the things are reported as facts, as data. And he is talking about a question that is asking you, how do you feel about it? Because quite often, those that have had the responsibility of public policies we derive from the addition of numbers, we draw our own conclusions of how the people should be feeling. If they feel more houses, they feel better. If there are more square meters, they maybe they feel better. But it is not that case does not apply to all. And at the end of the line, you have to ask those that are the object of the public policies. We are talking about the subjective part, the qualitative part of the answers of uh, public policies that add up to what Mexico traditionally has been as excellence on census. We have all carried out censuses on the best international practices level, uh, despite of the restrictions of many, many times about access, restrictions on access. What is interesting is that you can ask those questions. What is interesting is that you can question those things. I will not answer on behalf of Draco or Aristoteles, because there are many reasons why in, in, in any place. I can suggest some so you can evaluate some variables on behavior in the last seven or years, eight years. And worldwide, we had the largest crisis ever in our lives, the deepest, the one that had the largest impact in our lifetime, and that affected all statistics, especially on quality of life, employment, remuneration, opportunities, among other, of all the countries worldwide without exception, almost without exception. And I want to say because we don't realize the, the extent of the crisis. It is still present in many other countries and the tail still hits us because we have not yet overcome that legacy of that crisis. And I just suggest that as a possible context, but no, not all local differences uh, are originated by international c or cosmic reasons. There are local reasons as well, and you must discover it by asking your questions. You were saying, why don't we bring Mancera? Why don't we bring the, one, the governor of Nuevo Leon so they can talk to us what they did? Let's think that the, this Mexico City and Nuevo Leon they always have better indicators than the one of Chiapas. The problem is if the distances are coming closer or the gap is increasing between those distances to see if we are on the right track or we can, we can have to go back. That These figures enable us precisely that. They enable us to identify if there's a progress because that is the ultimate obligation or accountability of a government or a head of government to improve. And how can we do it? Because if the well-being is the ultimate thing of a governor that is the most important mandate for a government, then now we are better positioned to know if we are heading that goal by constructing these databases. Adagoberto, I would like to tell you well about the mobile. Well, we have covered that. 
That's good. It will be available. I'm my friend from Millennium. That was talking about the 38 million. I said that the total amount of Mexican people in urban poverty are 38 million, which means that it's one third of the population. Those are though are not new figures nor surprising figures. But if there is a growing process of urbanization in our country, obviously a part of what today is rural poverty that I insist, that's where you have the poorest people from the poorest, then they go to the urban area, to the peripheral areas of or urban areas because they are looking to have better life conditions. It is not surprising that the most vulnerable ones are the ones that are feel the need to move because they want to have a better life. And then that is why urban figures become much tougher, and then we will have to tackle with programs to fight poverty on the peri-urban areas. But the problem about that is that, well, when you come to those places, to those distant or far apart places of rural areas, the truth is that you are said you will give the benefit to of Prospera or Progresa or whichever na the name of the program is during this sixth term of office so they can do better in education, food. Maybe there will be one or two that are above that average level, but 90% of them do need need that kind of program. But in the peripheral, you see middle class people side by side. So if you launch the programs just like that, what happens is that first it will be very, very expensive, and second, it is not fair because you will be supporting families that not, do not necessarily need it. The only thing that is telling us is that the difficulty of what is being done in an automated, automated way of these measurements, of these policies, and the complexity of a country like us in terms of the people that are moving around. Satisfaction, well, has already been mentioned by Dr. Soho. In Mexico, you have a paradox. It, the level of indicators, so social economic indicators level does not correspond to the others in other countries worldwide, especially uh, of those of the member countries of the OECD. So there are elements of their family lives of the individuals that are higher in a certain way and that will compensate in a certain way some of the other lacks. Your staff is telling me that since this uh, press conference started late, apparently uh, we have to conclude it because you have to go to the airport. We thank you so much. Uh, and enjoy your lunch.